praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, this is a wonderful, it's been a wonderful day. The Lord has blessed us mightily today just with his peace and his quietness. You know, those are huge blessings in today's world. And a true Christian can have those things, peace and quietness. Hallelujah. Now we know there are two seeds in this world. There's the seed of the children of God and there's the seed of the children of the devil. This devotional tonight, The Two Seeds by T. Austin Sparks. I want to read over here in Matthew 13, the parable of the weeds, the tares. Matthew 13, 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seed in the field. Now listen to this verse here. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So what does that tell us? The enemy comes in unawares. Are you aware of anything while you're sleeping? No. He said they came in unawares, doesn't it? But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Now, a tear in a wheat field, you can't even tell that it's a tear until it matures. And then it stands out very evident black, dark, much darker than the wheat. So it's very evident when it's matured what it is, which is a tear. And see, that's exactly what the Lord tells us in this little parable right here. Matthew thirteen twenty six. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, and this is what I also found interesting reading these scriptures, then appeared the tares also. Hmm. But when the blade was sprung up, new growth, new life, and beginning to bring forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So what does that tell us about a tear? Okay, we're doing this in a spiritual way too. That's why the Lord said a parable, okay, to explain something to his people. But when the blade was sprung up, okay, new life and a life. And it's starting to bring forth fruit. Then the, the tares show up. Why do you think that is? Because they're trying to destroy that new life and the fruit of it. Matthew thirteen twenty seven. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? I thought you, you sowed good seed in this field. Then from whence then hath it tares? How'd the tares get in there? Well, I just read it to you a couple of verses above. While men slept. While they were unaware. That's when they came in. Matthew thirteen twenty eight. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. An enemy. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go up and, and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. That's in the growing, growing stages. Because you can't tell the difference. That's what they're saying here. He's saying here you can't tell the difference as they're growing up together. But wait a minute. 
in verse 30 of Matthew 13, let, let both grow together until the harvest, until the reaping. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into the barn. You know, I said it before. We've said it before in broadcast. You said that the tares are going to be in bundles. What is that? A lot? When you do a bundle of hay or straw, there's a lot in there. And they're tied together. They're tied together. In one place right there. Together. In a bundle. And they're being gathered right now. And the false teachers, the false churches, false Christianity are helping bundle them in their bundle, the tares. Getting them ready at the reaping season to be burned. To be destroyed, as God says they will be. Now, I want to get to this devotional here. The Two Seeds by T. Austin Sparks. Now listen very carefully to this devotional. It's very important. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. When we go out to the Lord's work and come into any place, we have the right to say, this place, by right, belongs to the Lord Jesus. And we put our feet down there and we claim that for the sovereign rights of the Lord Jesus. The field is the world. And it by right belongs to the Lord Jesus. It doesn't belong to the devil. The good seed, it says, is the children of the kingdom. Which he sows in the world. We are here. Listen, child of God, we are here in this world as children of his kingdom to claim his rights in this world. We are his representatives in this world. We are his witnesses in this world. Well, what happens after that? The Lord has sown his good seed. Well, then the next thing is the enemy. He comes to sow his bad seed. Jesus says the enemy is the devil. You notice this devil, this enemy, comes into what does not belong to him. Satan is a trespasser in this world. He is an invader. The world does not belong to him by right. He has come into it as an enemy. It is enemy occupation. He comes to sow his seeds and to sow his seed alongside of the seed which the Son of Man sows. Why is it, why is it that Christians get sucked into false doctrine listen to this he comes to sow his seeds and to sow his seed alongside of the seed which the son of man sows now remember in the natural realm the wheat and the tares you can't tell that a tear is a tear until it is matured it doesn't stand out in the wheat field until it's matured This one, the enemy's seed, hates the Son of Man. Jesus calls him an enemy, or the devil. Whatever comes from his, his seed, because he hates the Son of Man. Jesus calls him an enemy, and he gives him the name the devil, which means the adversary.
the one who just hates the Son of Man and is determined as far as he can to spoil the work of the Son of Man. That's what the tares do. Try to spoil the work of the Lord in a person's life. And so he comes into the field of the world and he sows his own seed alongside the good seed. Everybody knows that there are children of God and there are other children in this world. There are children of the kingdom and there are those who are not children of the kingdom. We all know that. We know that the other children are alongside of us every day. But you see, this here's the point. These children of the devil, of whom the Lord is speaking, are a special kind. Jesus calls them Darnell, or tares. Now, Darnell in the East is something that is almost exactly like wheat. It is so much like the true wheat that it is not until it is full grown that you see the difference. Just what we were talking about earlier and read in the word. This darnel or tear is something that is false. It is something that is an imitation. It is something that is a lie. It is something that pretends to be like the children of the kingdom, but is not. The enemy, well, he comes and sows something that looks very much like the true thing, but it is false. It is something that is the devil's lie. This kind of people talk the same kind of language as the children of the kingdom, and they do. Even with Satanists that infiltrate the church, they teach them the Bible very well. They can quote the Bible very well and the mannerisms of a quote-unquote Christian. That's how they infiltrate. Oh, they can use the scriptures. Oh, yeah. They can use the same phraseology. They can even talk about Jesus. Oh, they can talk about the scripture. They can talk about the death of Jesus. But they mean something quite different. The Jesus of whom they talk is not in God, is not God incarnate. They talk about Jesus, but they do not believe in the deity of Christ. They can talk about the Bible, but they do not believe the divine inspiration of the Word of God. Okay? They can talk about the death or the crucifixion of Jesus, but they just mean something quite heroic, like other men's death. They take out of the death of Christ all the divine meaning of atoning sacrifice. And in many other ways, these children of the devil speak the language, but they have not the voice. They are imitation Christians. They have not been born of God. They are not the fruit of a definite work of the Spirit. Now, this is something we really need to understand that does take place. And even does take place in the body of Christ because there are tares that have infiltrated. And we have to know and learn to recognize this. Why would Jesus even give us the parable of the wheat and the tares if he didn't want us to recognize this and not be deceived?
Imitation Christians. Not being born of God. Don't have the fruit of a definite work of the Spirit in their life. And guess what the, happens? And the devil brings them alongside of the children of the kingdom in order to make confusion. To make the children of the kingdom look something different. It is just this work of mixture amongst people. Mixture. Now we've talked so much about mixture. That's what happens. When people are brought in and there's a mixture there and they start mixing in that, it affects them. Because the tares are brought in to destroy. They're not brought in to help. They are brought in to destroy. Very often you cannot on the surface see the difference. Devil's very sneaky. So the servants of the householder went to him and said, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? Whence then hath it darnel, or tares? Why is there tares then in the field if you sowed good seed? And the Lord basically, I didn't sow this bad seed. They came in when I didn't know it, while I was sleeping, and sowed the bad seed. It said an enemy hath done this thing. An enemy has done this thing. Remember this is one of the works of the devil. To imitate Christianity. To set up alongside of the truth something that is false. Then the servant said, Well, Shall we go out and root up these Darnell or these tares? Well, the Lord said, no. If you do try to do that, you may not be able to discriminate between the true and the false. And you will be pulling up some of the true as well. Let both grow together unto the harvest or unto the reaping. What we say before, in a true field of wheat, you can't tell the wheat, the difference between the wheat and the tares until they're full grown. And then the tares stand out and they're real dark up next to the wheat. And you can tell very plainly that they are tares. The Lord Jesus has said very emphatically, do not do that. That is not your business. Just let both grow together. And as things grow, you will be able to recognize what they are. The evil will show itself more and more as time goes on. You will be able to recognize that that is not of the Lord. By the process of development, it will show its true nature. Has to. It has to be revealed. In the course of time and in the end, it will be manifested, well, that that thing is of the devil. It is against the Lord. The tear is of the devil and is against the Lord. Oh yeah, it may look different on the outside, but it's not. God wants us to recognize these things and to know the difference. But on the other side, and this is the real message of the parable, that which is truly of the Lord has got to grow and grow and grow more like the Lord. Just like the tear grows and grows and grows more like the devil. So the Lord's true people grow and grow and grow more like the Lord. It is, of course, true. That the church is in the world. And what is true of the world? It is of course true that the church, yes, is in the world. And what is true of the world can be true of the church. 
There can be those who are not truly born again children of God. They mix with the Lord's people. They profess to believe the things that are in the word of God. My point is that there are a lot of people mixing with the true children of God who are not really born again. They are not truly children of the kingdom. The Lord wants us to understand that the true children of the kingdom will grow more and more like the Lord himself. The others will not grow like the Lord. They will just be false professors. Now, the message of this parable is this. When the Lord comes, or at the end of the age, those who are His will be perfectly clearly known as His. There will be no mistake in the children of the kingdom. You will know who are the children of the kingdom. There will be no doubt about it. They have been growing more and more like the Lord. The true divine nature which, which he had put into them at the beginning is showing itself more and more. This process of intensification is the law of the kingdom. The parable raises this big question for us all. Am I growing more and more like my Lord? Let's ask ourselves these questions. Am I growing more and more like my Lord? Is there more of Christ in me as time goes on? The great consummation of the age is the manifestation of the sons of God. The word is. When he shall be manifested, then we shall be manifested with him. In the end, the sons of the kingdom will be clearly identified. But that is a thing which has got to go on every day. See, these two seeds we've been talking about were, were growing every day. And as they grew, it was possible to see which was which. Now, T. Austin Sparks says here, let me say to the young people here, begin by making very sure that you are a truly born-again child of God. That you are a true child of the kingdom. That, he, that you are not just where you are because other people have said you ought to be there. But it is because of a very real work which God has done in your own heart. And that being your beginning, make sure that you are growing and growing and growing more like your Lord every day. So that those who look on are able to say there is no doubt about that man or that woman that boy or that girl they are true and genuine things there is no falsehood about them there is no hypocrisy about them they are not pretending to be Christians they are the real thing because you know what in the end it will be manifested to all the world who are the sons of God. One other thing to notice here, what happens at the end? Well, the Lord here says that it is that which is of the devil which is to be first destroyed. It is all that which the devil has done, which the devil has planted, which will go to judgment first. He says, first, gather the darnel or the tares into bundles and burn it. All that is false, all that is not true, 
is going to burn in the judgment. And then the Lord says, Gather the wheat (laughs) into my barn. It is a long story of the evil work of the enemy. It created great difficulties for us. But guess what? But in the end, the Lord wins. In the end, the Lord has the true thing. And all the other has gone. It is the end that matters. We've got to make sure that everybody knows exactly where they are. The great judgment fires are coming. They're here. We are working for a future day. The day when everything will be manifested for what it is. And we must be very faithful. And leave nothing to chance. We must not assume that the people who think they are the Lord's people are really the Lord's people. We must do everything that we can to remove falsehood. The devil has put very much falsehood into Christianity. He has brought very much that is a lie alongside of the truth. And we must be very faithful to see that people know exactly what they are and where they are before God. Now, lastly, I want you to listen because this is so important and so serious that people not be deceived into thinking they're getting into the kingdom of God when they are not. Well, if you not if you are not a true child of God, take a word of warning. Nothing that is false or a lie is going to get into the kingdom. Only that which is the truth. So may we all be those who are children of the kingdom and are growing day by day like him who planted us. Hallelujah.